political crisis rocking River State. The chief of staff to the governor, Siminai Fubara Chidi Amadi, on Wednesday resigned his appointment. And of course, State Commissioner for Information and Communications, Joseph Johnson, who confirmed the resignation, said that the governor would announce a replacement at the appropriate time. But in the meantime, we have Dr. Kash Ononuju here in the studio, probably going to look at the appraisals of the resolution and efforts, of course, that met with the crisis so far. Yes. Good morning. It's good to have you. Thank you very much for having me. And Happy New Year. Oh. It's great New Year, too. I, I hope this will be a very, very fascinating year for the country. Mm. We are all so. hopeful as, as well. All right. So how do we begin? Yesterday, the chief of staff to the governor, Sim Fubara, threw in the towel. Um, everyone believes it's all part of the resolution we're talking about uh, that the president stepped in. But there's also a confusing story about all of this because um, last week, I think a week ago, there was this report that, you know, the governor had appointed a new chief of staff who, who was the, uh, you know, speaker who resigned as a speaker, that's uh, Ahe Edison. And then this report is saying that the governor would, would tell Nigeria who the next chief of staff will be. So it's a bit confusing. You've been following that development in, in that area. First, tell us what you think about this resignation, because this appears to be the tenth person who is leaving the government of Fubara over the crisis in River State. Thank you very much. I would want to say that uh, we are all Nigerians and we are consigned River State. Uh, River State is not an easy state. It's not a state anybody could just do a thing with. It's been tricky for Nigeria leading to 67 when it was created. And since then, we've had a balance. You had the Zoo, then you had the Igbo speaking Uplanders. And uh, you've now seen the creation of Bayosa leaving the majority Igbo Uplanders there. And they've had 24 years. And uh, it was the same upland river and dichotomy crisis that started the militants in the Niger Delta. Don't forget that. So River State is tricky. Yes, there had been agreements in Abuja. There had been instructions in Abuja. There had been wishes written of how some people would like peace to be. The governor has also gone home and have tried to speak to the people to say, this is what I saw in Abuja. This is what I was told. This is the agreement people have said I should implement. But you see, giving instructions and having wishes of how peace should be, it's not exactly the same as when you go down to implementation. The governor has gone home and he has now met stakeholders from various parts of River State. And uh, there are things that he has come yesterday to discuss with the president uh -huh. in regards to what he has seen regarding the implementations. That's why you're saying this about the chief of staff, the former speaker. There are things the president begged to be done for the sake of peace that some are practically not possible legally. And that's the problem. So reverse is delicate. Don't forget this. Mm -hmm. It was the same argument about river right on Upland that started the insurgency. Nobody from Upland partake in that militancy that spread as far to the Izon heartlands of Bumadi, Burutu, Fukados, and all that. The Izons are not happy. That's just the truth. Oh. President Tinibu need to understand this. He has lost a lot of his Izon friends. He should understand that. But Akkot, even though Bayasa was created, is there to the Zone Nation. Giving instructions to the governor based on emotions of the former governor, who should, after 24 years of the Upland being in power, allow those from the other side of the divide to also have a chance at governance. No. They are looking at the calculation of they must hold Lagos, they must hold Kanu. They must hold river state. And so you want to hold rivers by any hook, line, or sinker. But that's not what it is. We want, we want, I am, what you call the arrow, Ikwiri, like Uhua Bungwa, Mao. Mao was born in Rumubiakane. I was born in Diogo. We seek 
peace in Port Harcourt. Oh. My family seeks peace. Okay, and so, so and just, sorry, yes, follow sorry, up, please, Colin, please. I want to touch on the stuff that you talked about, issue of legitimacy. You talked about legality here. But where do we look at drawing the line? The, the president is perhaps the chief peacemaker. And what I see from the governor of Rivers is a man who is willing to allow that peace to thrive. When you talk about bringing it down home, between legitimacy and political collaboration, which we know will birth the unity of the entire region, do you not think that the people, the stakeholders, the elder statesmen, who are part of the voices of the places that you have claimed that have been marginalized, should seek out that as a first point of call? They have spoken from the far recesses of his own land. People like Chief Clark, them have spoken. Rivers, Bayelsa people have spoken. They so are begging President Tinubu to approach this issue cautiously. It's not just a weak versus or simple barrier, no. Okay, some also say... It is a delicate... I remember I told you, it was the same arguments about Upland River Ryan that started the militants in the Niger Delta. Remember that? If one group failed, used, and not allowed to participate, that was how this disagreement spiral. And we think... The president understands. He has told a lot of things to Governor Sim Fibera. As you rightly pointed out, he's willing to go for peace. He has gone home. Some wishes are not easily practicable. And this is the game. So the onus is on those fighting to undermine the diversity of the state. That's very important. And that's what President Tudibu is beginning to say. No matter how you jump through the windows to get anything, but you need that to respect diversity if you want peace. We need to respect the diversity of the Niger Delta. You've heard it's all from all walks of life, all states, saying they don't want this. And what's going on? Forget the, I can grab, steal. No, no, it's not so. For 24 years, we, the Uplanders, have had power. It is now the turn of the river community. You don't just come to Abuja because of your access to police, access to guns, access to whatever, the way our state is. And you want to display the extreme parts of state capture. It does not help anybody. We think we want peace. Uh -huh. We want, if you understand, and President Tinibu needs peace. He's now going for a second term. He's planning it. He needs peace from the people of the South. It's no good to go against the nation. I don't think that's proper. So. Yes, you might not, Governor Wicke will say, no, don't, don't ethnicize it. That's what it is. That's what it is. Since the creation of Bayosa, this is the first time a river and man rules river states. Allow them to rule. Hmm. Let's have peace. Everything is not power. Greed I know it doesn't work that way. I remember then as a child at Empress, we have people that are, are still in politics. They will fight in front of Empress. They will still follow us to Woji at the back of the railway line in my one to still fight. They don't know when to stop. They don't know when to stop. I think let's look for respect of the diversity of the state. You see, as I said, the president had made his presentations based on wishes of the Honorable Minister of FCT, but the governor has gone home. Practicality and wishes and instructions are not exactly the same thing. So he's come to tell the president, these are the things I saw. These are the things the stakeholders have told me. This, what, how do we go? Not everything is marked out in political straitjackets. Uh, so uh, I think, one, it's very clear. If the president wants to win the people of River State, let him use policies to intensify their watching it. And just as he's doing that, if he finds corruption, reverse people don't like national corruption. If he tries to fight the insecurity, reverse people will be very, very happy. You know, a lot of things are wrong in the country. Let's not allow one man's need to become Kiliwi Wachiku 
uh. to undermine the peace of real estate. All right. Um, some people have also described uh, the president's intervention as a political solution, seeking political solution to all of this, because we saw how the crisis was brewing, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone. Th uh, some people think that this would have escalated beyond what it is today if the president hadn't intervened at all, irrespective of how he went about it. But let's look at one of the resolutions, you know, that came out of that. The fact that he has said uh, stop all impeachment to the lawmakers. Stop of every impeachment move against, uh, you know, Sim Fubara, uh, uh, the governor. Isn't that also a way of saying um, we want the riverine people to continue with that leadership, at least at this time? That was an instruction to the House of Assembly. But the House of Assembly has gone back and said they're making laws to chip away at the executive powers of the governor. These things are not proper in a democracy. Those things they do are actually actions intended to cause a breach of the peace. I don't think that's proper. The governor sh should not act publicly, but it's good that he's going to tell the president. When they start doing this nibbling, the idea of go home is to go and find a way to make peace amongst yourselves. Not to allow Wiki to continue to think after eight years as governor, he can seize. Re no, no, nobody can. Because the structure we're talking about was set up by Rufus Ada George and Peter Odele. It led other George, it came to Peter Odele, and he worked as governor for eight years. It passed on to Celestine and Gozomeye. From Celestine, it came to Chibika Amechi. From there to that Nyesom Wike. I don't think Nyesom should be looking for any other thing. Look, he has led people in River State spiritually with his words that he cannot interfere. He has made people to believe things he said, the way people look up to leaders. And now he's suddenly, no, no, it doesn't work that way. For the sake of the peace of the Niger Delta, I'm saying it again. This kind of disagreement between Upland and Riverine was what started the militancy in the Niger Delta and spread to as far as Fokados, Burutu, and other parts of the Niger Delta. I think for the sake of the peace of the country, President Chinubu should hold Governor Wike to stop this. Mm. If he wants to leave the PDP, he can live peacefully. You cannot leave the PDP and still drag the PDP and still hold the state. No, he's done his eight years for crying out loud. All right, let, let, let's look at the fact that, I mean, um, I'm sure that there are other people from River State also watching you this morning. And you speaking about ethnicity, you know, perhaps also digs at the core of what they represent. But the issue of atrocious intrusion by the former governor in the state, of course, into the state affairs. People are worried that perhaps this could also cause a distraction to the real-time governance needed in River State, which is, should be expected by Sim Fubara. How worried are you about this, especially for the believability and trust that people had on him from when he won the election? It was a peaceful transition. And... Uh, it was also a chance for the state to heal. Wiki's tenor was disruptive. A lot of river citizens were drawn, driven away, as you people knew. So Sim was like a strategy to bring everybody home. Whoever it is that had been driven away, let's rebuild the state. Now this is for the peace and the stability of the state. A lot of people are watching me. I called people, yesterday I was in Duba. I told a lot of people when I was going to the airport, I will come do this. So it's not an issue. Everybody knows about this. From Upoku, from Upoku, down to Omurilu, down to Isiogbo. People are interested in what's going on. As I'm here, my family right now in Dubai are watching me. But we all want peace. You cannot achieve anything without peace. Now, the governor is seen to want to make why he has served Wiki for about two decades as a close confidant, as a close ally. But when you now give him that mantle of governorship, he's no more a Wiki's property. No, he belongs to the state, the people of the state. And that's why you talk about the emotions. Of course, emotions are there. It's the emotions that are there. The truth is, we can need to understand that the need for us the evil speaking uplanders to have peace with the river and people. But he's also argued that he who brings a lot to the table expects a lot in return. What he brought is exactly what others brought. Before him, good luck, Jonathan's wife brought him to power. Before 
that be told the Liberator brought you to power. This is it's a never ending story for peace. No, you don't need to undermine the state because suddenly the country is challenged and we're like in a period of state capture. So you now think you can capture a diverse society like River? No, you cannot. Uh -huh. Since the creation of Bayosa, this is the first time a river and person is really in River State. That's a fact. So even though Bayosa has been created, a lot of these still look up to Portacot as the eternal capital of the old eastern Nigeria, of the current south-south geopolitical zone. Uh -huh. Why don't you allow them an inclusion? All right. So let's look at uh, the issues and the resolutions reached at that meeting. Even though we know Sim have gone back, uh, the governor uh, has gone back to the pre uh, president. Uh, he, he didn't disclose exactly what the discussion with the president, or, you know, was. Um, he actually said it was a private meeting, uh, except you are telling us now why he got there. But let's look at. Um, the, some of the resolutions, uh, first we saw the speaker who was on the side of Sim be, before that resolution resigned and, you know, has been appointed from reports we have as the chief of staff. Now we see the former chief of staff who everyone believed is on the side of Wiki uh, training the tower. Uh, as difficult as, as some of those um, resolutions appeared legally, uh, it would seem like they are being implemented gradually. Is that what you see it to be? I don't know. You're the one telling me now stories about announcements about when the real chief of staff or who is not chief of staff will appoint. That means, look, politicians can play games. Words hard in the air, not from the authoritative desk, could be words hard from the air. <laughs> you understand that? So no, I don't get it because the, the, it, was the commissioner, it was the it was the commissioner of information that actually released uh, the uh, you know this uh, press statement yesterday confirming the resignation of uh, Chidi Amadi who uh, was the chief of staff before. Now. Uh, let's keep watching. If Chidi Amadi resigns, has he been appointed to something else? Anybody can do anything. There are quite a lot of people who may right now there were arguments. Either want to suffer the Stalin effect because you know the Stalin game, you peel the hair, the feathers on the cock, and because they are challenged economically, they seem to want to not act based on their conscience and what they believe in regards to the peace and progress of society. But no, for economic considerations, there are people plenty like that. So that's why you see in this reverse thing, there are elder statesmen that you respect that we see and even see as models but suddenly they are speaking and singing on your mind it we said those things do not make sense this is a serious time for us to take back country not when to play gallery no so what exactly are, are the people from the uh, zone people you're talking about you know what exactly do they want to be done uh, let's even look they at that specifically peace because of the south south geopolitical zone they want peace in river state they want peace of their part of the country. They want President Tinubu to understand that since 24 years inception of democracy, this is the first time a riverine person has become governor in River State. It was the riverine upline dichotomy, I repeat again, that started the Niger Delta militancy. If you understand the security import of some of the things that we do, I'm sure Shomu Force will actually hold hands in a lot of those things. I believe there is no story to it. His Excellency, former Governor Wiki, should face his job in Abuja. It's not done. He, it's not, there's no magic about Wiki. He can be governor three times. No, two times is enough. Let him face Abuja and then allow those at home to do things. Return home as former governor and be respected as an elder statesman. Note playing the talk. Okay, so, so, so let me come in here. Um, we know that this kind of political dogfight is it's long running in the DNA of politics in the River State since 1999. Let's look at the issue of Godfatherism because this extends to other you know, intrigues of political participation and those who bring people to the game. How do we review this and take back the power of the first voice of the person who is supposed to take the baton going forward? In that case, I would want us to listen 
and learn from Governor Wilkes' teachings. He said Nigerians should not respect Godfatherism. I want everything Governor Wilkes said is on video about Godfatherism. Remember? It was Governor Wilkes that went to Akwaibom and got Udom to start fighting go, uh, go, former Governor Kwabi. It was Governor Wilkes. It was Governor Wilkes that was on national television talking about uh, Godfathers in several states. It's Governor Wilkes. It's not changed. So what are we talking about? President Tinubu should just understand. Let Wike be FCT minister. Good. Wike is not popular in River State. That's take it from me. Wike lost his boot to P2B. Lost his local government to P2B. Lost his world to P. It's not popular. There is no need trying to do Togri. River is a diverse state. It will not work. It won't work. Forget it. All this is just noise. Tinubu should seek the peace of the southern people so that he can walk towards his re-election. Not allowing people to come talk River State. It doesn't work. Well, Governor Wike said that in a few weeks we will know who is in charge of that River State. That is threatening you. How can a man say that when you know in our country, under a democracy, the incumbent is stronger in every geography where he dominates? The incumbent governor, no incumbent governor had ever had no power. It's the truth. So why are you not threatening the governor? How can you say such a thing? A minister in Abuja telling people of a diverse society that we will know how can that be? He's trying to tell you that the state is so weak, he can now show power. Things like that don't work. So what, what does this say about this resolution, you know, that uh, you know, they, they had with the president? Because everyone, including uh, you now, believe that uh, some of those resolutions that, uh, you know, uh, tweeted, uh, tilted towards the support of, of uh, uh, the uh, former governor of River State. Uh, but uh, hearing statements after that resolution, it would seem like, is it that he is also not satisfied with us, even that tilting towards him? You call them resolution. I call them wishes. Wishes written by Governor Wilkie, passed to President Tinubu, and Tinubu giving it to uh, uh, go, uh, uh, Governor Sim Fubara to say, these are the wishes of the Honorable Minister. If you can keep them, I can think he can give you peace. You will have peace. The man had didn't talk. He's gone home and shown those wishes as enunciated by Governor Wilkie. And the first people said, some of these things and not proper. No matter how Your Excellency would think you, Simpubara, want to be seen to be obeying this intention towards resolution and peace. A lot of these things are just not possible. You know, you don't put your neck uh, before a butcher that has a very sharp knife. You must have some modicum of protection so that should he raise his hand, you would know how to dodge. No, but not just lie right under his sharp knife. Mm. I, I don't think that makes sense. So that's part of what is in those wishes Governor Wiki wrote and forced them to be given to Governor Fubara. But Governor Fubara has gone home and has come back to tell the president, sir, a lot of these things, see this one, sir, see this one, sir, see this one. It's easy to come here and know. That's exactly what we're telling President Tinubu. Let him tell his minister the way he has acted in the issue of the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry. We, showed, we saw him act firmly. Let him also be firm with Governor Wilkie. That means when he acts, his people, his minister will listen. So if Wilkie continues to do that, we will be forced to believe Wilkie is working for him in intention to their own strategy of having pole position in rivers, in Kano and in Lagos before the 2027 elections. And we think these are the things that are driving this kind of behavior. Yeah. Because I really don't see anything that Governor Wiki forgot at the Brick House. He can come to Port Harcourt, or else you will call him. I mean, I don't think making trouble with incumbent governor is the best way. No, he has done his game, and we thank him for his eight years of service. Hey, my, my estate, in Port Harcourt is gained because he did road in front of my place. You talked about this being a wish um, uh, against being a resolution. And someone would say, if wishes were horses... These are wishes. That's wishes. why they were not yes. easily actionable, as Absolutely. you saw. <laughs> but, 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 you know, people would always say, I mean, there's a quote that says, if, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. But some beggars did ride because APC 
is in charge of the state assembly, where you saw most of the uh, you know, members of the state assembly defect to APC. We haven't seen any resolution or the wishes reversed in that angle. And so you have a governor who is a PDP governor as against the state assembly that is, you know, on the other side of the incumbent president. How does that also, you know, resolve the impasse? Because the state is watching and a lot of people believe that the strength of the governor comes with when he's able to have, you know, certain level of charge of the state assembly. Let's say the law allows him that jurisdiction to exercise the power as conferred on him by the auto for office. He exercises executive power, and that's what it is. No one else should compete with him. But when former Governor Wilke now seeks to remote control, that is not known to our laws. That's against what society should accept. It's not been accepted in any state, and I don't think River State will be a first. So I believe, for the sake of peace, for us not to re-excite a second Niger Delta impasse, let peace reign in River State. People are quietly watching because they believe President Tinibu is behind some of Wiki's actions. Huh? Tinibu's instructions to the people at the Humanitarian Affairs was acted upon with fiat. Why wouldn't he give such instruction to Wiki to mind his work in Abuja? and leave River State to be. Understand what I'm saying. And that's why I say, if Tinibu is not able to do that, it holds proper that we can act on behalf of Tinibu's intention to seize River State, seize Kano State, and also seize Lagos State prior to the election. I don't believe Tinibu should learn to use policies to bring the people of River State. River is a very difficult state. If you go to election tomorrow, Vote free, vote free. APC will still lose. The same way APC lost in the February 28 elections. So we cannot think he has to have incumbent control of the state to be able to write results again. The same way you've seen people confess from his community that they wrote the result. Peter B won the result in River State. That was the truth. All right, Dr. Cash, just coming in here, we will just take a quick break. I was going to ask whether there is a gentleman agreement between Minister Wiki and the president that we don't know about that keeps giving him the bold and bravery to continue to do this. But We've been talking about the issue or the political crisis in River State, and we're looking at uh, how far the resolution has gone so far since after the president's intervention. A uh, politician is in the house with us. Dr. Kach Oronoju has been analyzing issues from that state. Thank you so much for your patience and welcome back to this discussion. We'll be wrapping up shortly. But uh, the earlier question I asked before we went on this break is whether there is uh, some unwritten agreement, uh, you know, that you think uh, between the governor and, the, you know, the the. <laughs> the uh, immediate past governor who brought him in that people are not aware of that he's probably not keeping that's maybe causing the crisis you think so no there's no unwritten agreement there's no written agreement that's nothing it's just the years of uh, commonality between the two uh, got governor wiki to actually believe uh, will be will be a boy forever i think that's just a problem it's a human issue you know, Obi could be a boy, but there's time when you two, the father, should understand Obi has to become a man. And Obi now is no more your private property. Obi suddenly occupies a statute mandated public office. You see? That man he used to know that he used to work with has now been released to go serve the public. So, Governor Sim Fobara is now the property of the generality of Rivers people. And this is where this issue is. So, would Governor Wicke want to now use Fobara to colonize Rivers State? I don't think that's in our laws. He cannot do any of this without using the security apparatus of the state. And because he is in Abuja, we saw that. You saw when some uh, police people tried to even shoot the governor, even shooting him with water cannons, shooting live bullets at his direction. Those things are due to the kind of confidence given from having proximity to the seat of power enjoyed by Governor Wiki. 
That's why you hear him make statements like, uh, very soon we'll go know who's in charge of the university. No, those thuggish statements should not come in. And I think that's not proper. We beg President Tinibu to look at negotiating peace with the South South geopolitical zone through his policies, through appointments, not through hiring third party talks. That's not proper. That's right. not the best for the state. That's not the best for the region. And that's why I started by reminding the country that the Niger Delta crisis started with this same problem. An argument between the River Rhine and the Upland, and when it was not well treated, the people in the River Rhine started acting in very violent ways. And before you knew it, it went around the Niger Delta for the sake of the country. We don't need problem in that zone. All right, let, let me for the intention of one man okay. to dominate a diverse society is not possible. Tinubu could hold Lagos because there is a homogeneity about the Yoruba leadership of the Lagos political elite. It does not exist in the Niger Delta. It doesn't exist in River State. All right. So I mean, if you say. I hear, I hear you all answered some colleagues' question, but again, people would ask, is, is there really some sort of gentleman's agreement between the former governor and yes. the incumbent president? Yes. Because it seems as if he feels there like There are gentleman's has... expectations, but let me tell you how it works. Okay. The gentleman's expectation is like the one you have between President Tinibu and Governor Sanwolu. Sanwolu implements policy, runs the state. If there are things Tinibu wants, he picks up the phone and calls him. Oh boy, look, somebody I'm sending to you, and that's kind of thing. It gets taken care of. But not to say that as you're ruling, no, I have to rule. It will be me. I'll make up memo in Abuja, and then they will send it to you. The state-owned jet will stay with me in Abuja. You can be using the Embraer. Those things don't work. The state doesn't belong to Nelson Wike. The state belongs to the people of River State. It's a collective property. The president doesn't have the powers to cede such collective property to one man. It doesn't work that way. And this is what we're saying. So if you say you thuggishly uh, sponsor people to have some assembly, made appointments, that's why you're not seeing the people resigning. Because if the man who appointed you is not fighting the structure of the political superstructure of the state, you wouldn't feel comfortable to stay there because nobody would trust you. In Wiki's camp, they actually believe that, you know, those giving ethnic coloration to all of this that is happening in River State may be going out of the point because he knew that uh, Sim Fibara was from the river or is from, you know, the riverine area when he made him governor almost single handedly uh, at the time when even people from that region, uh, some of them were not even in support that he, he will become governor. Good. In River State, the champion of ethnic coloration is Governor Nyesa Weekend. Let me give you one. When we in PDP here were arguing for the zoning to be given to the South, the Northern House told us, no, nobody will vote for an Igbo man. Wike told us that he will not change from being Igbo. Wike said the campaign is not Igbo and not Igbo because the party said they won't vote Igbo. That's, look at that kind of ethnicity. And he took it everywhere. We've had peace. We've never had such I'm not Igbo politics. No, the last time we had it was 76. Senator Biwali was going to an election, and some people were talking about the Igbo and no Igbo. He said, I'm an Igbo man. He won the state in a landslide. Wike is the champion of ethnicity in River State. He brought that same I'm not Igbo, I'm Igbo, I'm not. So when he brought the I'm not Igbo, I'm this, when Wike uh, he denied his heritage, Sim Fubara did not deny his. So he said, I am a River Ride man. And they so quickly claim them as their son. Now, dog we say, now dog bona. Then the people go to say, now dog bona. If you say not be dog bona, they're going to look you. But now dog be you. He is a champion of ethnic policies in River State. No, but the point I'm making is that he's the one that, you know, brought in Fubara, even where he knew his. He uh, did not bring in Fubara. He did his eight years. He left and he looked among those who served him and he trusted that Fubara would be the best to go on. He did not bring him Fubara. When Mrs. Goodluck Jonathan looked at the state and her husband gave her the right to talk about who will succeed in her state, she looked 
and she suggested wicked. That's the way it was. When Governor Odile looked after eight years and he checked who could serve him, he suggested Governor Chibika Mechi. That's the way this thing works. When you leave, you select for society the next champion. All right, Dr. Chakash, right. you are probably, uh, I would say here that we would see how this works. <laughs> Going with this conversation.